Dear people of God, the Lord be with you. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter in our Easter season called Good Shepherd Sunday. The message today will be based on the 23rd Psalm. Let us speak those familiar words together using that familiar King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Protection. Do you feel protected? Do you feel better entering into a very diminished public life wearing a face mask? How about the hand washing? How about drive-in meals or click and collect? Do you have a designated grocery shopper? Maybe you live alone. Maybe you have to rely on your own self to protect yourself as best you can. In times of crisis, we seek protection, safety, comfort. You don't want to feel alone. It's one thing to be alone, but it's another to feel all alone. Well, you're not alone. The Lord is with you. Even if you're not an active believer or a believer at all, with God's word here today, spoken and heard, you are not alone. Jesus Christ is with you. And for all who trust in him by faith, even a little bit, the Lord is in you. His word promises that thanks be to God. This is the very same comfort that sustained people in the early days of the church. In those early times, faith and commitment to Christ and their promotion of the gospel posed a major threat. The governing authorities spent time attacking and even killing Jesus' brother and sister believers. And it's that kind of culture that enlivened this teaching of Jesus as the good shepherd. Those believers needed protection, safety, and peace. Jesus as the good shepherd became one of the first prominent images giving people that much-needed comfort, even those who, like some of you, were all alone. Even the places and homes and the underground caverns where believers gathered to avoid persecution, they took the time to paint images of Jesus as the good shepherd, holding a lamb on his shoulder, with birds in the air and birds nesting in trees, and sheep at his feet, very much like this image we have here from the earliest days of the church. Jesus, our good shepherd. Very comforting. Now, we are not being persecuted in this time of lockdown. We're not being killed or put to death or even harassed for our faith by any of the governing authorities. It isn't some government conspiracy. They're doing the best they can to keep all of us safe. We're in our homes, fortunate enough to share our faith and be fed in new ways which didn't even exist before. Good Shepherd Sunday has remained a fixture because that preaching of protection, that word of peace and comfort is still important, maybe today, now more than ever. The fourth Sunday of Easter has been celebrated for many centuries, honoring Jesus, our Good Shepherd, with 23rd Psalm of King David, a prominent passage of Scripture. And I've used that passage we spoke today at nearly every funeral service I've led in my 20 years of pastoral ministry. And most people know it by heart. It's familiar, like the Lord's Prayer. It's helpful in so many different life situations. The Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. The Lord is your protector, what else would you need? Shepherd and sheep images found great fondness in ancient culture. Today it may take a bit of googling 
to understand shepherding and place ourselves into that pastoral scene. Think of shepherds as being parental, caring, strong, in the sense of taking care of others before they take care of themselves, nurturing, feeding, guiding, protecting of the sheep's lives and their surroundings, making sure the sheep remain safe and held together. All our needs are satisfied because the Lord is the shepherd we shall not want. We want for nothing. Now, that can be a little hard to imagine. Living in a consumer culture makes us want more and more, and we begin to worry about running out, like that mad dash people made to the grocery stores when COVID-19 first hit. Who wasn't afraid toilet paper was going to run out? Now, while we do need those things, the Lord, our shepherd, not only makes sure we have our lives held in his hand, but he strengthens us to work, to plan, and wisely attain our daily bread and all the household items we need. Our shepherd is making us lie down in green pastures, which are places of comfort and nourishment and protection when we rest, when we pray, when we listen, when we mingle with our families in our home, when we chat or text or message. We are sur- supported by the Lord to receive and to give. And while the Lord, our shepherd, protects us and feeds us, He especially cares for our spiritual lives, bringing us to the waters, the still waters, which are calm and safe, free of any turbulence. And once safe, he restores our souls. Without that inner life of faith protected, nurtured, cared for, nothing else would have any meaning. We need our souls restored. In Hebrew, King David chooses the word shuv, It's a returning us back to the way we were in our original state, like refinishing old woodwork, old furniture. It's time-consuming if you've ever had to do it, but you and I are time-consuming, and we are important to the Lord. He never throws anything he has created away. He saves us, restores us, and wants us to return to our original state, which is the way Adam and Eve had been created in paradise people connected to the Lord in communion with him, people who rely on his holy restoration, that our fears may all be relieved, our protection sustained, our anxieties calmed, that we, in turn, may be kind and merciful to those we need to help. Because when we live in fear, we hurry and we hide away, just like sheep. The Lord knows we're sheep at heart, Now, as cute as sheep are, they have a bad side too. They run away, they look for better feeding pastures, better grass. They're helpless when time of trouble hits. They have a mind of their own and are often wrong about all the choices they make. Sound familiar? We, like sheep, have gone astray. Because we are not in our original state without sin. We have our own ideas So we need to be led back into the right path, forgiven, restored, grabbed out of the messes we make, led through the deep ravines and the big gorges and the cliffs of life we pass through every single day. Life is hanging in the balance right now. We do not know what the future holds. Truth be told, we never did. Our life prior to COVID-19 sort of lulled us into a sense of false security for many decades feeling we had things in control at the touch of a button or now at the touch of a screen. Now we feel the change. Now more than ever we're faced with new viruses and our span of life on earth we concern ourselves with and what the future will even look like moving forward. All the more to have the Lord our shepherd guiding us and guarding our souls. For he walked the valley of the shadow of death, embracing his own death. The shepherd laid down his life for all the sheep. Our protector let his own body be abused and killed just to let us off the hook and take us out of danger. The one born, worshipped by shepherds, was led to a hill, pushed down to the ground, nailed to a wooden cross, lifted up for the world to see as a great spectacle, as our dying Lord our protected shepherd. He left everything 
that he knew was his of glory. Let himself be unprotected. Let himself be all alone so that his life would be our new never-ending source of life. And that image of our crucified shepherd is the staff that comforts. The cross is the new living shepherd rod. It comforts, it guides, it guards, it protects. His rod, his staff, his cross. It comforts because it means life will come from death. It means relief will come after a time of suffering. The shepherd dies and is risen for the life of the world, and we are blessed. Which is why his cross leads us to a table, because he's connected his promise of protection and faith with the church's table that is spread before all of our enemies. That precious word, the baptismal font, the altar, the bread and wine of communion. The church is the place to receive our Lord's restoration of soul. The church is the place of protection. The church has the bread of life and the royal wine of heaven. But churches aren't open right now, are they? We're still at home, right? So now the Christian heart is still open, isn't it? Christ is still living in you. Your faith is still active. And the Spirit keeps you connected to Jesus Christ through his precious word. The still calm waters of baptism keep you safe and calm, just as the sanitary wadding, washing of hands daily reminds you that, yes, washing still saves you. Baptism still comforts you and creates your identity as a sheep of the great shepherd. The church hasn't been replaced. It is still very important, but it's like a waiting parent. That church building patiently waits for all of her children to come back and return safely, and we will one day. But for now, the church comes right to you, restoring your soul, wiping away all of your worries, preparing your table before your worst of enemies, as your dinner table meals celebrates your family's unity. The church table, that meal celebrates your unity as the body of Christ. And until we can share in that meal of Christ at his table, May our meals remind us always and ever that our Lord, our Shepherd, protects us still, nurtures us, feeds us, saves us, and forgives us. Our cup runneth over. Mercy remains our way forward, as goodness remains our faith-filled desire, until that day we live with our Shepherd in heaven forever. When we worry about protection, the Lord intervenes and he hides us in his body, protecting our faith, protecting our lives, so that we want for nothing. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, protective Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. And at the cross, you watered us with the blood and water from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again by helping us remember our adoption into your family by baptism, which is a water of life. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty. Give us the life only you can give. Thank you for calling us by the voice of Jesus, our Good Shepherd, through the Scriptures. Give all pastors, faith leaders, and believers a spirit-led passion for their service and encouragement when times are difficult. Bless our government leaders with wisdom and godly caution. Help parents and teachers guide their children into right paths. Have mercy on the dying and those who mourn, be it from COVID-19 or any other ailment. Walk with them through the valley of the shadow of death. May we and all people hear your voice, and be gathered into the one flock of your Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us go in peace, serving our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>